Hi everyone. I know I said I was going to do a video on a American this time, but I got this Harvard uh, six lever in the mail and I got way too excited and I want to bump it up in the list. Um, got it off of Etsy, got it with no key and locked. And uh, the, the way I found out about these pancake locks is Bosnian Bill did a video on them. And he said he bought three of them and needed to make a key for one or two of them and didn't know how he was going to do that because it's not a standard pin tumbler lock. It's a lever lock and you can see those levers in there and you have to manipulate all six levers at the same time. So it was my goal uh, not only to get one of these because they're just such a beautiful lock, especially this one. I mean, it's got this battle damage on it. It's got this solder. I mean, someone took this apart and serviced it because, I mean, th that's what they did back then. They didn't, if something broke, they didn't just go, oh, I'll just go to the hardware store and get another one. Back when these were, locks were used, there probably wasn't a hardware store for miles, you know? And um, and I know you're gonna, probably going to say, oh, that's, uh, that's where you took it apart to make the key for it and all that stuff. Um, that's not the case, I, I, I assure you. And I'll show you that I have a picking method for these that works and a way to um, impression a key. But anyhow, just a beautiful lock. Uh, and you can see it's well used and all, all that stuff. Um, but anyhow, uh, got got this lock and uh, I kind of had some ideas when I saw his video, but I wanted to try it out on my own. So that's why I got one of these. And it was really cheap without the key. And uh, it seems like they're really cheap without the key. They're quite a bit expensive with a key if it's made if it's made by some someone else, and it's ungodly expensive for one of these with the original key. So unless you get a really good deal on it. So um, this is what I used to pick it. Uh, this is a uh, all this is is uh, six gauge eighteen gauge uh, finishing nails that come out of a nail gun. You know, uh, two pieces of wood and a and two uh, paper clips, you know, strong paper clips, some of the, with the handles on them. That's all it is. And, uh, I got into this with this and, uh, so, uh, anyhow, I'll show you how it's done. Uh, what you do is you zero all these out and just put them on a level surface, get them as close to level as you can. I'm doing this through the viewfinder. So, if, if it looks weird, it looks weird. But anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this with one hand. I'm going to take this with the other hand, and I'm going to hold it with my with my middle finger and my thumb, and I'm going to put my finger in the shackle, and I'm going to pull on it. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm pulling on the shackle. The shackle moves just a little bit. And what that's going to do is put tension on the bolt and push it into the gates. So when I'm pushing this in there and moving them around, it's going to... Uh, the gates will catch on the bolt, hopefully, and then one by one they'll all catch, and then it'll open. Uh, that was my plan, anyway. And it worked, uh, and I'll show you the key for it that I made. But uh, anyhow, so I'm going to zero this out, and uh, I'm going to make these just a hair longer, because uh, I used inch and a half. If I, if I were just going to go out and get these, you know, if, if I were just someone seeing this and we're just going to go out and replicate this, I would get two inch ones. Because these inch and a quarters are just a little bit too short. And sometimes it takes two strokes. And sometimes it takes 200. But what you do is um, you keep your tension on it. You put it in the keyhole. And I'm going to look over the camera real quick here. You put it in the keyhole. And you just bounce it back and forth. And the, the, the thing I, I found that works the best is if you keep it in the same spot every time. Like use one of the walls to guide you in and out. And just push it in and out, push it in and out, push it in and out. Don't pull it out and look at it because then you're going to forget where you were. But just uh, put it in the put it in the keyhole, pull on the shackle, and just keep pushing it in and out. And uh, eventually those gates will line up. And it's not doing anything right now. i got to push these out just a little bit. There we go. Now we got some more room. Okay, so uh, tension and finger, middle or thumb, middle finger, and keyhole, and like I said, I'm trying to do this through the viewfinder. So, so we got tension, and we're gonna. There we go. All those are longer, and you can rock it back and forth, but just try to keep it on those. There it goes. All right, so now it's open, and you can tell this wasn't open when I bought it. And hasn't been open for years. So 
I was just going nuts after I opened this thing. I was jumping for joy. I was running around. It's actually in my dad's garage when I did it. And, uh, and, uh, luckily I was because, uh, I got all excited. I got it open. You know, it's all open. And I was like, man, this thing hasn't been open in a million, billion years. It's so great. It's so great. Let's take a look at the key. And that's what I got. And I was like, oh no, because I don't think a key would be like two shorts and four longs. You know, that looks like way too easy of a key for it. And I thought, oh man, how, how am I going to impress? How am I going to make a key for this thing? So, um, um, my dad was looking at it going, oh yeah, cool. You open this big deal. And, um, uh, you know, he doesn't realize the gravity of the situation. Anyway, he goes, Hey, look down here, all these, all these, uh, all these little teeth are different heights. And I said, Oh, so basically what happened was, is all these levers lined up. They're stuck in the bolt that releases the shackle at the same height. And, uh, so they're all stuck in the right position until you lock it again. So I was like, Oh man. So then what I did was, um, and this is kind of a tricky part too. zero it on the other end. And I'll show you why. Um, you see these nails have like these little, uh, teeth in them to kind of hold them in after you shoot them in a piece of wood, those will catch on this wood and you won't get a very good impression. So what you want to do is slide them up so that, and that's why you'd want to use longer nails. That's why I'd use longer nails if I did this again. Um, what you do is, uh, slide those up just so the, the, the smooth metals touching it and those, those grooves are out of the play. And then, uh, you take your. Now you take your, and now it's not a pick anymore, it's just a depth gauge. And make sure you hold the shackle open or else you're going to have to pick the dang thing again. And put it in there and just kind of rock it back and forth. I might have to have him go through just a hair more. But anyway, try not to get as, try to get as few of those little buggers, little groove guys out of there. Zero it out. Sorry losing focus um, come on no one wants to watch a blurry video sorry about this okay so get it in there and and you just push the, the, the wood down to the metal or excuse me the the you push the metal or push the wood down the metal yeah I said that right the first time and uh, I think I'm going to need to go just a little bit deeper on these. And like I said, longer nails would not hurt on this. So um, now I'll slip it in there and you just push that all the way down. And there you go. That is your key. And just to prove it to you, this is kind of locked in this in this situation now. So now you push your lock back closed and um, short side points towards me, I believe. And we'll put that in there and it opens. So now you got your bidding on your key. So then after I got my bidding, I was like, oh God, now how do I get it on a piece of metal? You know, well, I didn't have to. Uh, I went ahead and I tried soldering it, but it didn't work. So I went ahead and took some of this. Uh, it's like a plumber's putty, and I don't know if you can see that, but these are all the nails, and they're all lined up kind of like those are. These are a little bit longer, but that still works, still works, and I drew an arrow. The arrow points to the front of the lock, so I don't look silly when I'm trying to open it. Going, oh, man, I don't know which way it goes. So that goes to the front of the lock, and you might want to do that yourself. But anyway, you can see all the nails, and then I I got the putty, and I you uh, it's two colors. You mix it up until it's one color, and I wrapped it around here real tight and let it dry, and now... For a lock that had no key and probably hadn't been open for years, I now have a fully operational, make sure that's in there, key. And now it unlocks. And now I've got the key. And then now I can transfer this to like a piece of sheet metal or a feeler gauge or something like that, or something like that that's a different thickness and cut it out with a bandsaw or something. And then I got, and then I got a cool key for it and, and it's ready to go. So, uh, that's, that's the story of this Harvard Six lever, and I hope this helps you. And I hope this helps a lot of collectors. You know, uh, find and if and if you if you can't figure this out or you don't want to figure this out, look online. There's people who will do this for you. I don't, 
uh, do this for anyone else just because of the liability. Let's say one of those springs was just about to break and I stick that pick in there and it snaps. And then I got to call you and tell you that I busted your lock and <laughs> it's worthless now, you know, so don't, don't send them to me. You know, I, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want the liability, but there are people who are professionals and they will get that done for you and they'll get the key made for you. And, and, um, as far as the resale value, it adds, it adds quite a bit to the resale value. So it might be worth it. So anyhow, I'm going to wrap this up, but, uh, just a beautiful lock set, a little 61 stamp there. That's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, that's how you pick it. And you make a key for it. So uh, don't forget that once you've picked it, it's not your work's not done. You gotta you gotta do that impression to get your key, and make sure that those make sure that those nails will slide in that wood, and they're not caught on those little ridges. Because I ran into problems with that too. But uh, anyhow, it, you know it's gonna either work you know two tries or two hundred, and you're in there. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I doubt. I doubt that it's possible to use this for anything illegal at this point because I don't think these locks are as common, but uh, please don't. Uh, please don't use any of this information for bad. Uh, use it for fun like I do and uh, have a lot of fun with this. And thank you so much for watching. And hopefully next week I'll get to that dang American and tell you the story about it because it's a neat story. Uh, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll uh, see you next week probably.